If you'd like to support me or my channel, you can follow me on Patreon and gain early access to videos or your name in the credits for as little as $1 a month. Monsters are really cool. Most of the time, but for every entrail-ridden vampire or vengeful spirit, you'll get something like the Babendum Entity, which is basically nothing more than an evil tire mascot. Let me explain. Many of you may be familiar with the Michelin Man, the world-famous mascot for the world-famous brand Goodyear Tires. But while advertising may pay his bills, his true calling in life is to haunt the European countryside and scare random civilians half to death. He's been at it for a while too, with the earliest sightings going back to 1926. Our story begins with a young British boy playing hide-and-seek with his friends when he noticed his neighbor had left the gate to their yard unfastened. Of course, being a free-spirited young man, he decided the best course of action was to commit a little friendly neighborhood trespassing. And so he did. But sadly, no good deed shall go unpunished, and as he approached his neighbor's back door, he was greeted by a dynamic trio of ghastly figures. In his report, he claimed they looked exactly like the Michelin Man, each possessing a large, heavy-set suit with pillowy features, topped with a domed glass helmet, where he could see a reptilian face with slitted eyes. You know, just like the Michelin Man. And this description of them as strange, astronaut-looking things was a pretty common one that popped up all over the place in the 1950s, especially around France, which was the first major hotspot of Michelin Man sightings. Countless stories tell of bright lights falling from the sky, only to later be found as translucent airships parked in the middle of nowhere and containing these strange, pillowy humanoids. Oftentimes, they're wearing canisters on their backs, connected to some kind of headgear, either described as a glass dome or something resembling a motorcycle helmet. And forget what I said before, a lot of these figures are actually pretty creepy, so I guess the really weird thing is how so many people could see a robotic motorcycling astronaut lizard and come to the conclusion that the Michelin sales team has taken a new direction in their advertising. One thing I quickly noticed while searching for modern day monsters is that most of them are just different flavors of alien. Which makes sense, since the idea of an alien encounter is still a relatively new one, but still. There's a lot of aliens. Such as the Flatwoods Monster, a West Virginian icon with a metal skirt and a bold spade-shaped collar. This fashion diva was originally spotted in 1952 by the most verifiable source imaginable, a group of 10-year-old children. But if that source sounds a little too verifiable, then might I suggest the Fresno Nightcrawler, a pair of sentient pants from Central California. Or perhaps the Dover Demon, who basically looks like a big-headed man in the middle of an ill-advised weight loss routine. While terrors of outer space are a common motif with these contemporary cryptids, creatures of the past are nearly just as plentiful. Of course, we have Nessie, believed to be a lay surviving plesiosaur, but there's also the Michele Mbembe, a jungle-dwelling brontosaurus, or the Ropin, a bioluminescent pterosaur. But none of these are my favorite. For that, we'd have to turn to the American Midwest. In the early fall of 1903, the small town of Van Meter, Iowa, was visited by a bizarre nine-foot-tall creature with the wings of a bat. It was later dubbed the Van Meter Visitors, since the locals were just bursting at the seams with an untapped imagination. It was seen by several of the town's most upstanding citizens, flying just above the skyline at a blinding speed, while emitting a harsh light from the crest of its head and producing a memory-erasing stench. But I gotta say, this stench must be pretty bad at its job if so many people remember it this clearly. Regardless, descriptions of this Midwestern dragon were all over the place, with some saying it looked like a bird, and others claiming it was more like a kangaroo. Two creatures that don't have much in common, if you ask me. But thanks to this being an old-timey town in the American Midwest, most people simply describe the beast as a devil, with the newspaper claiming it sounded exactly like Satan and a regiment of imps coming forth for battle. Which really paints a picture, you know? I mean, they may not know the difference between a bird and a kangaroo, but everybody knows the iconic sound of Satan and the imps. Anyway, the locals eventually resorted to shooting the swinging tourist out of the air, but guns proved ineffective. They did, however, have a conveniently nearby coal mine, and were somehow able to seal this thing away inside. But I guess the amnesia stench made the locals forget the part where the giant man-eating bird escaped its enclosed tomb, since visitor sightings have continued to the present day. Obviously, there are plenty more modern-day monsters to draw from, like the various globster bodies that worship on beaches all across the planet. Or the story of William Robert Loosely, a Victorian man who was spotting UFOs and alien robots before it was cool. But I think those are stories best served for another video on another day.
But as for today, let's take a look at some of last week's Floors Finders. Azuria was able to smash an all-time record by spotting a Floors before the video had even been published. But of course, not to be outdone, the Happy Nihilist found just about every Floors there was. Alongside Corn Baby Laughter and Oh My Dearest Boy, who could have found the rest if he wanted to, but he's simply too powerful to even be bothered. Speaking of powerful, we have the Sneezy Afton guy, who was the first, and as far as I could tell, only person to find this Atena Floors. And honestly, there were just way too many people to mention this time around, like Nautilus Not a Squid, Flannel, and the Ninja with a Tie, who really, really wanted to be mentioned. Really bad. But that's all I have for you guys today, so if you find any in this video, then let me know in the comments down below or on the Discord server. Links are in the description. And until next time, don't die. See you later. Also, I know I look like I'm, like, cosplaying as a traffic cone or something, but uh, I'm wearing this shirt because on the back, you can't see the back, but look, the back is a moving shirt guys moving furniture and i just recently moved into a new apartment um so i wanted to to, to wear this to commemorate my achievement <laughs>